Hello, my name is Vinford Sansbury, and welcome to The Truth of the Times, Episode 1, Examining the Zeitgeist Movement. This series of short educational films you are about to watch was created in direct response to the first portion of the award-winning film, Zeitgeist. The film presents the viewer with an astounding flood of mostly new information that the director, we must trust, has compiled in order to support his thesis for the documentary. The first portion of the film deals with the origin of Christianity and various other religions. Mr. Joseph proposes that Christ is an imitation of several mythical figures who all symbolize astrological phenomena, such as the movement of the stars, the sun, and ultimately, the procession of the zodiac. Anyone watching the film for the first time is usually either shocked that they did not know this, or shocked that anyone would give the award to such a film so loosely based in fact. So which is it? Is the film a work of genuine truth which has been lost and reclaimed by the brilliant director? Or is it something that merely takes some controversial claims from other writers and random internet sites and mixes them together into some sort of Dan Brownian Da Vinci Code knockoff to win some awards? Unlike the film itself, and several other video responses which I've watched and found lacking, as they simply follow the same flawed pattern of presenting an argument by flooding someone with information without a clearly stated source, I will do what should have been done long ago, and insert references to written works, historical and collegiate in nature, and logical reasoning as each statement is presented, and not at the end of the film after lambasting the audience with an overload of information. Rather than being an outright response to the movie, which some may not have seen, this series of films will also serve to educate those not in the know, and challenge those who may have conflicting information to bring it forward instead of hiding it in the credits. This series will not present the viewer with some over-emotional, quick and witty compilation. Rather, it will be more comprehensive and far more reliable than any other response or apology that I know of so far. For those who want to watch the film first, please either visit www.zeitgeistmovie.com or www.sprword.com or just Google it. There are dozens of sites hosting this film. If you don't want to watch it, do not worry, because I will be quoting almost every line from the first part of the film in the spirit of truth and seeking real empirical evidence for what is truth. Quid est veritas. So, on that note, let us begin. Let's start with the title. What is Zeitgeist? Zeitgeist is a word of German origin, meaning the spirit of the time, general trend of thought or feeling characteristic of a particular period of time. This reference was taken from Dictionary.com, or the Random House Dictionary, which are one in the same. Rather than focusing on some general thoughts or feelings, let us instead examine the evidence in the Wortheitgeist, the spirit of truth. Point two. The film claims spirituality is a term which means our dealing with intuition. Is this true? Well, again, according to the Random House Dictionary and Dictionary.com, Spirituality has the following definitions. 1. The quality or fact of being spiritual. 2. Incorporal or immaterial nature. 3. Predominantly spiritual character as shown in thought life, etc. Spiritual tendency or tone. 4. Often spiritualities, property or revenue of the church or of an ecclesiastic in his or her official capacity. So no, spirituality is not and should not be based independent of reasoning. Point three. Now is definitely the now. Is this true? While we perceive now as the now, now actually occurred in the past, between the time it takes for the light to reach the eye, the eye to send the signal to the brain, and the brain to process the event, the now we perceive as an instantaneous occurrence is actually the past. The same is true for sound, touch, smell, etc. The speed by which the mind perceives events separates the perceiving mind from the reality around us by varying degrees. The information travels at speeds ranging from 1 to 100 meters per second, once a signal reaches the nerves. Therefore, in the most scientific terms, one can never perceive the now. The present is an approximation based on the very recent past. 
our inability to experience now is not just a biological process. There are also physical mathematical processes at work that guarantee that there will be no singularity in nowness, known as Einstein's special theory of relativity. Point four. We actually experience fantastic precision always. Is this true? No, we do not. As we've already discussed, we can't even experience what's going on right now. But there are more reasons than that. We are not perfect. We cannot think with the same precision as, say, a computer. To err is human. We are imperfect, we are fallible. That is what it means to be human, in a sense. Ask anyone who's had a few beers. They will tell you that their precision was definitely impaired. In fact, not even computers are so precise all the time, because they were built and programmed by humans. This statement is just totally outrageous. Point 5. We are threatened by the now, so we jump to the past or the future. Is this true? Sometimes it is. Some people who cannot cope with reality indeed experience something called regression. Regression, according to psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, is a mechanism leading to the temporary reversion of the ego to an earlier stage of development rather than handling unacceptable impulses in a more adult way. The defense mechanism of regression is psychoanalytic theory. It occurs when thoughts are temporarily pushed back out of consciousness and into our unconscious. So what is jumping into the future? Though not really explained very clearly, one could assume that the speaker is talking about hope, such as hope for a better future. The speaker seems out to rule the acceptance of things as the way they are, or escape to fantasy where things are outside of reality entirely. Point six, trusting the nowness. The film argues that if you are waiting for death, one does not trust the nowness, and that is why we seek religion and political change. This is absolutely true, but not necessarily a bad thing. After all, who can trust the nowness? Remember what we already discussed in points 3 and 4. We cannot accurately perceive the present because of speed limits in the universe and our limited precision. So why trust this illusion of nowness at all? As living beings, each and every one of us is destined from birth to die. The past has proved this empirically. Maybe in the future science will prolong our lives, but the universe is destined to self-destruct eventually, according to leading theories by most scientists, as to the creation, expansion, and collapse of the universe. So, if you could somehow miraculously escape to heaven or another universe, like Elijah or the Virgin Mary, or Jace the Planeswalker from Magic the Gathering who travels the plains, and then ensure that you are indestructible, so you cannot be killed by some horrible annihilated accident during your semi-immortality, and do this forever. Then you can stop worrying about death and revel in this nowness, which we've already shown does not exist. But if you can do this, hey, more power to you, but it's quite improbable. Thank you for watching episode 1 of The Truth of the Times. If you're watching on YouTube, you will be automatically directed to the next episode, where we will delve deeper into the heart of the matter of the religious debate behind the movie Zeitgeist. While the credits roll, we ask that you please take this time to rate the video and leave any feedback, or comments, or corrections you may want to bring to light. Please also let us know which parts of this film you think should be included in the very final version, which will be a feature film length presentation, consolidating all of the subject matter into one or two hours. If you would like to contribute to the final film, please email vinnyplaneswalker at gmail.com. Once again, I'm Vince Sansbury, and thank you for watching.